Good morning, Radiant Life Church. Good morning, visitor. We're so thankful that you've checked out uh, Radiant Life on Facebook Live this Sunday morning. You know, it's a real blessing to be able to come and serve you each week, leading in worship, sharing God's word. So we pray that you're encouraged and that you're blessed today.
forgiveness of the Lord like holy water on our skin. You know, in, in the middle of COVID-19, sometimes that's, that's hard to see. That's hard to understand that the forgiveness of God is always there and present and with us. We wanna share a brand new song with you. And we really, in the middle of this, Ryan shared with me before uh, uh, this service, 11, 12 weeks in, man, it feels like defeat at times. I don't know how you're feeling, but it could feel like defeat. Like, man, is this ever gonna end? Am I ever gonna get to see your faces in this room again? Sometimes I'm asking myself those questions. God, where are you? What are you doing? Why did you allow this? But God promises that he's gonna work all things for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So we wanna share a new song and the chorus goes like this. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to the Lord. Friend, it's not up to you, it's not up to me. It's as safe as we can make ourselves and our families. This battle, this war that we're waging, it's in the hands of the Lord. And we need to trust Him. We need to sing this song with conviction. So if you know this song right where you're at this morning, would you stand and sing?
We believe that COVID-19, it wasn't from you, Lord. We believe that this is attack from Satan on our country, on your people, and even on the people that don't know you, on our world, Lord. And we're believing now in this moment that you're going to bring a victory, Lord. God, that you're gonna bring release, that you're gonna heal this land, God. And even though we don't know what that's gonna look like, Lord, we trust you. Continue to use us, Lord. Continue to use us in the midst of, of what the enemy intended for evil. Use it for good, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen. You know, COVID-19 affects a lot of different people in different ways. And each week we're trying to tell a story of some family members, some people that call Radiant Life home and just how they're facing the challenges, the same ones that you're facing. So check out what Ben and Monica Pant have to say about COVID-19. Ben and Monica, thanks for joining us uh, to share your story. First thing I wanna ask you guys, how are you doing? I think we're pretty good. We're actually... Yeah really good considering everything that's going on, as horrible as that feels to say. It's true though, I mean, you haven't had any work issues, like you haven't had to take time off, and... The kids haven't killed themselves or you. Right, yeah, that's, that's always a plus. I figured for sure somebody would be injured by now. It's actually not much different, except for we just have a lot less socialization. Um, and the kids are home. <laughs> I feel like we're, I feel like no we're focused. There's no outlet from the kids. <laughs> I mean, other than that, like, and even then I don't mind that, but I get to go to work, so for me nothing's really changed, but, I mean, we're, we're pretty good. Yeah. Good. So in COVID-19, though, everybody has had challenges. Everybody has had difficulties that they've faced. What are some of the challenges and difficulties that each of you have faced during the, during the stay-at-home order? Uh, I love staying home. It's kind of what I do. It's your um, thing. It's what I do best. <laughs> um, the challenge I think that we face the most is having the kids home, having school, and making sure that that's getting done um, promptly and correctly, and that they're not you know, murdering each other in the back room <laughs> before it's done. Even then, that's more the problem than them doing their work. They're pretty good about it. They get in and do their work, so that way they can do what they want to do afterwards. True. Yeah. I would probably say one of my hardest things is, you know, just knowing what to do in the situation. Like, I mean, I still have to go to work. I still have to come home after going to work, which means, therefore, everything's changed. You know, one day they tell you not to wear masks. One day they tell you to wear masks. My work asks for a mask. Um, I mean, I just, she, Monica's had bad immune system over the years. So, I mean, it's, I just don't want to bring anything home. I mean, that and I'm the only one that really leaves the house. The virus that took him down for 24 hours almost killed me. So it's nothing new to us to have to think about our exposure and the kind of things that we're getting into as far as and, germ wise. And I'm pretty fortunate for the most part, like at my work, I'm, on, I'm by myself for the most part, like I'm on a forklift, I'm not really point blank with anybody. So, I mean, I just stay away from people which I like to do anyway, so at least there anyway. <laughs> so in the midst of those difficulties and the struggles of educating your kids at home, knowing you know what to do to keep your family healthy, how have the both of you grown and seen God faithful in the midst of those struggles? I would probably have to say, I just feel extremely blessed because I mean, after the whole situation, like, I've been coming to God and like over the past, getting more and more with my walking. It's just to think now that I help, I get the blessing of being able to help film the service and I get to be a part of it. And I've grown closer to the Haramas, which are my neighbors. And I mean, everybody involved in our COVID-19 team, which for helping film and stuff. Like, it's just to think that some of my best friends and people I consider family are part of the church and it's, I don't know, I, I couldn't ask for anything better, honestly, because. I've been very blessed. It, between work, friends, family, I mean, there's really 
once you just let everything go into God's hands, you don't have to worry anymore. I mean, if you would have told me like a year, year and a half ago, that something like this would happen, when I would say you're crazy. But two, if you were to tell me that the people that I would spend most of my time with were members of the church staff or just members of the church in general, and they would be the majority of my friends I spend my time with and talk to the most, I'd probably say you're crazy. But I mean, that's what it is now. And I couldn't ask for anything else. That's awesome. So kind of a, a sillier question, but tell me one thing right now that's bringing you joy. Dinner. Uh, uh, finding new and creative ways to keep our very creative and very intelligent children busy. Um, we call it art. It mostly just turns into a mess. Um, sometimes I like to disguise work as art. You know, like painting the shed. It'll be fun. Like there was a new Hunger Games book out. They were super stoked. Annabelle was super stoked for that. Like she'd just been super eager for it. And I mean, just little things like that. And honestly, everything that I've mentioned before, it was what we're doing amidst the COVID-19 is what's making me happy. I mean, I'm getting to help out with filming. I'm getting to help out with, you know, send, uh, reading recaps and stuff like that. I mean, I truly enjoy doing all of that. And like, I, I'm busier than I was before pre-COVID-19 or whatever you want to call it. But it's a joyful I mean, busy. I, yeah, not, I mean, I love busy. it. I, I love having all the stuff to do. Well, good morning, Radiant family and guests. My name is Brandon. I'm our community Next Steps pastor. I just want to say good morning. And really, I want to piggyback on what Pastor JB just said, that uh, stories are impactful, and that's why we've been sharing these. And we just sang that song uh, about victory. I would just be curious in the comments below, what is a victory that you've experienced uh, because what you type down in the comments right now could be super encouraging to someone who's in the midst of that battle. So have you found a victory over depression, uh, anxiety, or fear? Uh, what, what's a victory that you have found? Maybe it's an addiction of some sort. Man, give Jesus the glory right now and just put that in the comments below and just maybe that could be encouraging to someone else. Hey, if you are a guest, thank you so much for allowing us to be into your home. Well, depending on where you're watching us at, but if you're at home, thank you so much, and we would love to connect with you. We fully believe uh, in community and family here at Radiant Life, and you're going to see a link right now in the screen. You'll see a link in the comments, and that's just a way that we can connect with you, and then also just give you a heads up on things that are kind of coming down the pipe, so to speak. And uh, I know we're going to be launching small groups soon, so hang tight for that. But we've also been in this journey of 21 days of prayer and fast and we're getting ready to head in to week three here and it'd be awesome to hear some of your guys' stories message the church let us know uh, how these uh, past 14 days have just really impacted you and how maybe the Lord is speaking to you but if you've missed it that's okay you can still jump in we'll be Facebook live at 8 a.m. every single morning unless it's the morning that I'm doing it because I totally messed up and I slept in this week, but we did get that video out, and if you're watching us on YouTube, our live stream, we do also post those videos there, so just, there's a playlist in the YouTube, go check that out, so I'd uh, love to be able to connect with you, because I really, I fully believe, I fully believe with all my heart that this season that we've been in, and just slowing down, this has been a wonderful opportunity to kind of get down to some of these spiritual disciplines of just praying and fasting and just trying really hard to get in tune with God's spirit. And I fully believe that he's gonna do something absolutely amazing on the other side of this. Church family, you have been absolutely faithful in your giving. You've absolutely made God first. So thank you so much. And maybe you're a guest and maybe God is prompting you to trust him more in all aspects of your life. And I just wanna encourage you, here's a few opportunities. You can head online. There's a Tithely app. And there's that old-fashioned thing called snail mail. And then the opposite of that would be texting. 
uh, who would have thought that you could text and give? So you just text to this number. Uh, the first time you set up a couple of things, and it's really that simple of just putting in the dollar amount and hitting send. Hey, First Wednesday's coming up, and if you've never been part of First Wednesday, I can't encourage you enough to, to be online uh, this Wednesday at 6 o'clock. It'll be on Facebook, and uh, the, there's going to be the worship team. There's going to be a little devotion, and really, it's kind of like that midweek boost, so to speak, and to really get centered on God, and I absolutely love First Wednesdays. The first Wednesday of every single month, we get together, and we worship, and, and we just ask God to, to speak to us in a mighty way. Hey, uh, we're getting ready to go into a brand new teaching series called SWAT, Spiritual Warfare and Tactics. And Pastor JB, he even kind of alluded that. There is uh, this spiritual realm, so to speak. There are things that we can't see. Yes, there is a devil, and it's not the little guy with the fork in his hands. And uh, maybe you've experienced some of that in your life. We're going to talk about these things. I mean, we're in this season of unknown, and now we're going to be going right into a spiritual uh, warfare and tactics. And I am super excited for this teaching series. But before we get into that, Pastor Ryan's getting ready to take the stage and bring our final installment of Into the Unknown. family. My name is Ryan, lead pastor here at Radiant Life, and we are so excited that we are wrapping up our three-week teaching series titled Into the Unknown. And we've been kind of on this water uh, theme for the last two weeks, and guess what? We're going back on the water to wrap this thing up here this morning on week three. But uh, if you want to have a Bible with you, or if you have a Bible with you, or your tablet or your phone, Will you turn to the New Testament, a guy by the name of Matthew, and we're going to be in his letter, Matthew chapter 14, verse 28 to 33, because we're just going to jump right into this story. And uh, as you turn there, I'm going to get it set up for, you, for us this morning. Uh, it's a different boat scene in water. It's one of a, a really famous boat scene in water. But uh, here Jesus sends his disciples in on a boat. And says, hey, go to the other side of the lake. But Jesus goes up on a mountainside and he prays. And uh, all of a sudden a storm hits and the disciples are kind of freaking out. They're in the middle of the storm on the lake or what is known as the Sea of Galilee. There they are. And Jesus starts to walk on the water. Now, if you grew up in church, maybe you know the story. This is where Peter begins to walk on water, but um, we're going to come at it from maybe perhaps a different angle that maybe perhaps if you already know the story, you've never saw this angle before. And it's going to be impactful as we are wrapping up this series together. So here, all of a sudden, Jesus is coming, walking on top of these crazy waves, and the disciples are on the boat. They're freaking out. They're terrified, and uh, they think Jesus is a ghost. Right? I mean, who wouldn't? You're in the middle of a storm, and this figure is like walking on top of these massive waves. And hear how Matthew describes it. Actually, Matthew, uh, by the way, was there. He's one of the disciples. He's one of the 12 guys that hung out with Jesus. He's there in the boat writing his recollection of what happens. And there they see Jesus. Ah, ghost! And it goes like this. Peter! who is the, the lead disciple, if you will. Lord, if it's you, Peter answered him, command me to come, on, or come to you on the water. And he said, referring to Jesus, come. 
And climbing out of the boat, Peter started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the strength of the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus reached out his hand, caught a hold of him and said, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind just ceased. And then those in the boat, they worshiped him and said, surely you are the son of God. And as we kind of enter into this, this pandemic that we're in, into this unknown, it may feel like maybe perhaps for us, there's, there's a loss. We feel like as we enter in, there's so many things that have been stripped away from us that we may have a lens on our eyes right now or a perspective that says there's a lot of loss everywhere. And perhaps there is. But perhaps we can learn something about this story, that it's not necessarily a loss, but a win. And what can we view this pandemic and going into the unknown with a win and not a loss? But before we unpack it all, I want to pray for us this morning and just let the Holy Spirit speak to our hearts. So would you just bow your head, close your eyes, and let me pray for you. So Father, we come to you. We come to you whether we're viewing this whole pandemic thing and isolation as just one giant loss, or maybe some of us are actually excited. I don't know. But God, I pray as we jump into your word, that your word would touch our hearts, would speak to our hearts. Would your word transform us? May this message and teaching not just be information. God, may it be absolute transformation. And God, if college football ever resumes, I pray my Wolverines will finally beat those team from Ohio. A big W would be nice. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Speaking of wins and losses, I don't know about you, I'm competitive. I'm only competitive in the things that I like. Like, if you like playing cards, um, awesome. I can't stand cards. So I'm not competitive in cards. I could care less if I lost in a card game. Actually, I don't know if I'm actually competitive. Maybe I just love winning. Like, I think most of us, we like winning, right? I've never met someone that says, dude, I am so into losing. It's unbelievable. No, we're all like a competitive, or we all like to be on the winner's side, right, of life. Well, speaking of winning and losing, a, a sport that I played growing up, I mean, I was little when I had a tennis racket in my hand. I love tennis. In fact, I, got, I was able to play all throughout high school. thought I was going to go to college and, and play tennis. Then the college, my freshman year, cut the team, and that was great. And, but I was able, during my college years, to actually coach tennis at, a, at North Point Christian High School. Shout out to the Mustangs there. And uh, it was just a fun time. But about nine, eight, nine years ago, uh, I had the privilege to go out on the tennis court and play with our, our very own Pastor Josh, assistant pastor here at Radiant Life. And this was our very first time we've ever played tennis together, and we were actually playing doubles, and uh, he was on my team. I, I got the joy. I think, I think, to be honest, it was like Ryan, since he's the best of the four or the three that were there, it's probably, I, I got Pastor Josh, which was, which is fine. I, we were going to win no matter what. Remember, I like winning. And so, um, Pastor Josh, I'm, I'm up at net. I'm up at net. Pastor Josh, we're, we're starting our match, and uh, Pastor Josh gets to serve. And uh, I'm like, sweet, man, we're going to win this thing, right? And I'm at net, the very first serve. I'm in my stance, got my racket up, right? Bam! Oh! He nails me in the back, in the middle of my back with the tennis ball. Hey, guess what? Don't play with Pastor Josh. He's bad at tennis. No, that's not the moral of the story. But he nailed me in the back with the tennis ball, I don't know what that has anything to do with Jesus walking on water and Peter, but it's wins and losses. I felt for a moment, man, this is going to be an ugly match, right? Like, we're going to lose this thing if Josh is pegging me in the back. No, but it was an awesome time. But I, I, love, I love winning. I think we may take this perspective of winning and losing, and we kind of put that lens and then superimpose it on God's word sometimes. Like, think, for instance, what are some big W's in God's word, right? Um, how about when the walls of Jericho fall? Like, we'd be like, yeah, big W there. Uh, how about when David beats Goliath? Big W. Or um, how about when Jesus conquers death and the grave? Like, what we celebrate as Easter Resurrection Sunday, probably the biggest W in the entire book, right? Right there. But we also classify some losses. Like, think of the New Testament. Think of Peter. Yo, Peter, you, you denied Jesus. Like, bam, big capital L. Dude, that's a loss. 
Judas, you, you were one of the closest ones to Jesus, and you chose to actually go out and betray him. Like, that's a loss. And maybe perhaps we actually view this story that we read in Matthew as a big L2. Like, <laughs> Peter, man, you were walking on water, and you started to sink, like seriously. And we think maybe when he gets back in the boat, maybe he's embarrassed or something, I don't know. But we tend to view the lens of this story with a big capital L, a big loss for Peter and as we read. But many for us, we may be feeling this pandemic and this isolation, it's a big loss. And that's really the lenses, that's what we're looking at right now. It's just the lenses that we have on as we're going into this unknown is a big L. What would I say, perhaps, if, um, if we change the story, not change it, but we actually put on the lenses of the big W? You know, here in the middle of the storm, as Jesus is on that mountainside praying, and he sees his disciples in the storm. I mean, these, these are waters that the disciples are used to traveling, but what's interesting is they're not used to these emotions on the water, because they, they were used to this water. They just weren't used to storms like this, massive waves and storms, and all of a sudden, Jesus is walking on water. They think he's a ghost. And Peter, because he's the disciple that always wants to go first, because he is the leader, of course, of the 12 disciples, he speaks up. And what's funny is what Peter actually asks Jesus, right? Hey, Jesus, if that's you, tell me to come out and walk on the water. Now, put yourself in the story. I'm probably asking Jesus, Jesus, if that's you, make everything calm right now. But Peter, his you got to, I wonder if Peter sat there and go, oh, crap, I shouldn't have said that. Like, oh, just calm the storm then, Jesus. Don't actually make me walk on this stuff. And Jesus says, fine, come on, Peter. And all of a sudden, what's incredible about Peter is he's actually walking on the water. Like, that is incredible that Jesus, or Jesus and Peter are both walking on the water. And then here in Matthew, I love what Matthew records, because Matthew was one of the disciples on the boat. And I wonder if Matthew's sitting there going, dude, Peter, you're nuts. Why are you going? You're walking on top of these massive waves. What are you doing? Get in the safety and the comfort of the boat. But Matthew records this, records this for us. Um, well, if, if this clicker was working, he would have recorded. But he records this for us right here. And we're going to get a team on the slides and right now, all right, so this is when like life doesn't work. You roll with the punches, right? Remember, I like winning, and I'm not winning right now. But uh, look at that. Nope, good try, though, not the correct slide. There right now, just side note, just hang in with me. There are now four people trying to figure out this slide in the back right now. Uh, Matthew, it's in Matthew 14, verse 30. It's after the title slide. Got to go about into the middle of my slides. So right now, side question. Uh, if you like water, throw a thumbs up right now, okay? If you like boating, throw a thumbs up right now. If you want to say a prayer for me right now, I'll appreciate that too, all right? But uh, Matthew chapter 14, verse 30. Go to my other slide, please, because this has the entire scripture, and I don't want the entire scripture, this is incredibly awesome. This is where you just keep going. But I'm going to keep going. They'll eventually get there, and they're there. Look what Matthew records about this. But when he saw the strength of the wind, he was afraid. Now, I think for many of us, what we're doing in the moments is we can relate to P Peter in this moment because we see the strength of, pa of this pandemic. We see the strength of COVID-19, and we don't know what the possibilities are with the economic implications the mental implications that this can have on us. The socio and economic implications, our job implications, there's just so much right now. You and I can relate to Peter in this moment. We see the strength of this pandemic and it's freaking us out. It's making us afraid. And here's where most pastors would stop and say, ah, but Peter lost sight of Jesus. See, he took his eyes off of Jesus and he saw the craziness, which is true, but that's not what I'm gonna tell you. What's interesting is how did he ever get here? The problem was his eyes were already on Jesus. And then he's there. 
His eyes are on Jesus because he sees the ghost. And his eyes are already there. His eyes were already on Jesus when Jesus told him to get in the boat in the first place. His eyes had always been on Jesus. And it's following Jesus that caused him to get into the storm to begin with. And life isn't always easy. There's real pain in life. It's painful sometimes to follow Jesus because your flesh wants to do one thing and your spirit wants to do another. It's painful sometimes. But oh, I'm telling you, the rewards outweigh the risk. And we understand. And then all of a sudden we get this little insight into what's happening in Peter's mind. It says, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Lord, just you got to do something right now. Save me. And I wonder just how many of us, we feel like we're sinking and we're crying out, God, can you just stop this thing? God, I, I don't know about this homeschool thing, and thank God they only have a week left. God, I, I don't know. There's a rumor about my, there's layoffs at my job. I don't, God, can you just save me right now? God, our bank account is looking extremely bleak. And to be honest, I don't even know if I can pay my next mortgage or put food on the table for the next two weeks or so. God, can you just save me? But then Matthew, Matthew, as as Peter is sinking, he records, immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught a hold of him. He's sinking, and Jesus still has him. He's sinking, yet Jesus has him. You may feel like you're sinking, but know this, Jesus still has you. He has you. And then Jesus said, you of little faith, why did, why did you doubt? And I know at times it may feel like this is absolutely, Jesus is kind of like, you dummy, that is a big L for you. That's a big L. But I know the heart of Jesus is not those who trust in him, who follow Jesus. Jesus, there is no condemnation for those of us who are in Christ Jesus. I wonder if just Jesus is sitting here in this moment with a, with a different attitude. He says, just like, what got into you, Peter? What got into you? And I wonder if Jesus is sitting that, kind of telling that to all of us this morning. Hey, why are you freaking out? Before all this hit, we were great. I still had you. And even though we're walking through this, going into an unknown, nothing's changed. I still have you. You're still in my hand. And then Jesus and Peter, it says they they get into the boat, and and the wind just, just ceased, and they started to worship. And it's like, that's the end of the story right there. But I felt like I needed to remind you two quick things. Two quick things this morning. And number one, we need to live into this. That we are not sunk. We're not sunk. Remember Jesus' heart is like, what, what, Peter, what got into you? I noticed Peter never gave a response. He didn't go, Jesus, did you not see these massive waves? Like they were crashing and everything. We're freaking out. Like it, We never get that response from Peter. But what we get from a loving Lord is saying, listen, this isn't a big capital L. No, listen, what you realize is I'm with you in the middle of this storm, which is the capital W. It's a win for us. You are not sunk. You may feel like you're sinking, Real pain, real frustration. But while Peter's sinking, Jesus was holding him and he still got you. You may be sinking, but we are not sunk, church. We're not sunk. And here's the second thing. We're not stuck. We're not stuck. We're heading into an unknown. This whole pandemic thing, this whole COVID-19 thing, friends, it will pass. We're not stuck in this forever. It's a season. 
Why don't we let the one who can walk on top of the waves, and who can walk on top of our storms, be the one to hold our hand into the unknown? To realize, wow, I, I may be sinking, but I don't have to be stuck. Oh, Jesus, just keep, I'm holding on. And you'll be the one. And I love it. What was interesting about the disciples is this, this is, they were in awe of the storm, the craziness, terrified, until the one who rules over the storm turned it off. And they got into the boat. And something pretty cool happened. Something amazing. And this is where I want to be with us as we wrap up this entire Into the Unknown series. And those in the boat, friends, I haven't done this a lot since we've been on video, but can we read this one word together? They what? They what? They worshiped. They worshiped him and said, truly you're the son of God. You know, worship doesn't always just mean singing. It can. But what I notice is that when we just let go, I'm gonna tell you friends, you meet God in the middle of the storm and when the storm has cal when calmed in incredible waves, you've never met him before. And you say, God, I'm just, I'm in awe. I'm in awe. And when you're in awe of who God is, it becomes authentic worship. It becomes this reckless abandonment of, I don't care what the rest of the world, I don't care what everyone else says, I'm worshiping my God because he's still in control. He's still good. He's still on his throne. And in the middle of it, not many some of you, you struggle with worship because you think it means song and we know you can't carry a tune real well. I'm one of those, it's okay. But for you, maybe it's little statements. God, you're still good. God, you were faithful yesterday and today and forever. God, your blessings are incredible. It's the small little acts of worship like that we can do. So I want to close this whole entire series together with this thought and this question. How do we go into this new normal? How do we go into the unknown? We don't know what's on the other side. Church, we go in worship. That we will head towards that maybe scary thing over there. We don't know what's, what's over there. The waves are crashing and hitting, but we're going to go in worship. We're gonna go ahead and raise a hallelujah in the middle of it. Because guess what? We know we're not sinking. We're, we know we're not sunk. We may be sinking, but God still has his hand on us. And no matter what waves are crashing against our boat, Jesus is still in our boat, friends. He's still there. So we'll head into the unknown, raising a hallelujah. Say, God, you're, this is your victory. This is yours. It always has been yours. It always will be yours. This small season doesn't change that. So friends, stand up where you are and let's worship. Let's raise a hallelujah, friends. I raise a hallelujah. The presence of my enemy.
this unknown. We go in worship in the middle of the storm, louder and louder. Guess what, Satan? You're going to hear my praises roar. Come on, friends. We go into the unknown in worship. The last two Sundays, we've closed our teaching out with this prayer. And I thought it'd be appropriate for us to close out this entire service but this entire series, one more time, saying this prayer together. So if you're able to, will you say this prayer with me? Jesus, we declare that you are still in our boat. Jesus, we declare that you are still in control. And Jesus, we declare that you are still up to something good. We trust you, oh God of this universe, powerful enough to proclaim peace be still Amen. Amen. Well, we're excited for next week. For next week in our brand new teaching series titled SWAT. And the stage is going to look different. It's going to get a little different feel altogether. But let's go into this unknown in worship. Family, friends, we miss you, miss you guys. We can't wait to be together. As always, as we say, though, in the meantime, let's go and be radiant and go be radiant in worship. Blessings to you guys.